Um, thank you for attending the talk, Mastering Robots. Transform your website operations for maximum efficiency. And I uh, just want to take a, a hot second here to give a quick shout out to all the sponsors. Uh, the event would not be possible without you, so thank you very much. And um, take a moment, just some quick introductions. Introduction. Uh, my name is Les Keeby, or potentially Les Keeby, depending on where you're from. Uh, Massachusetts gave a time and beauty to the audience to try to be very honest. I actually don't know why I kind of tell us it. That's the best joke, it's definitely beauty. Um, work Digital Polygon, we're a robots agency, and I've been the director of technology there uh, since uh, early 2023. Um, and I built my first Drupal website back in 2011 on Drupal 7.2. So, it's a bit of a Thank you so much. We will talk about that. I was about to make that offer. Did anybody want to check that afterwards? A uh, couple of quick guys right here. Yeah, my, uh, a little bit about me. Recently, we've become a gardening addict. Um, you know, I got the ice cream now, so I might as well give it a shot. And I did to it. Love playing with some of the watch. Tomatoes, peppers. I'm a, I'm a salsa guy. Um, yeah, I love you. Love playing some of the watch. Amazing, yeah. Uh, and Rohan. And uh, of course, like probably the people here, I love starting new projects and everything. <laughs> so, the agenda. Let's see if I can make a little bit bigger. One sec. Oh, this is so much better. It's very nice. Right, so. Let's talk about robots. So we're going to discuss what is a robots. Um, then go into why. Why is a robots important? Um, how long is it to embrace? And sort of you know, looking into how we did the polygon or approaching um, robots solution. So what is robots? WebOps, Web Operations, refers to the processes, practices, and tools that we use to manage and optimize our applications uh, and services, um, which you know, provide productivity and credibility for your organization and people that things in the same manner. It creates principles from both development operations, marketing, business uh, side of things, to enhance the efficiency, reliability, and security of our websites. Uh, a web ops mindset streamlines. Uh, your web team is better to achieve more performance, faster delivery times, and overall, more importantly, typically, in business, increase cost of value. Web ops is at the intersection of IT, security, and marketing. For whatever public facing side of things that the business they have. And it's marketing, you try to be, anyway. So, Pantheon actually has some really great diagrams, and I'm probably going to link this presentation. I really enjoyed this one. Um, lays out the aspects of GoBots in a really nice one in a way. Uh, it really focuses on the really six core, public six core areas of it um, CDN, release management, their cloud platforms, which are also platforms. Security compliance uh, and uh, governance. Uh, we won't talk specifically about every aspect today necessarily, but there isn't enough time. Uh, but we will be focusing on a few of them and we'll just have a lot to control them. Now, that's the what. Let's get into why. Why go to us? Well, it's always important to find a why. The way we see WebOps is built to streamline the value delivery chain of websites. Uh, this could take many forms. This could be to decrease full time costs. This could be to increase the generation. This could be to provide service to constituents more time in there. 
end of the day, time is money. If you want to learn uh, more about uh, why this is so important, feel free to please check in on John Tomorrow Tamara on uh, AI in the space, which really focuses on rating institutions. And when I think of WebOps, I really think of how I relate it to incident work, particularly the way the five human senses. The five senses support humans the ability to be aware of and react to the events that transpire in the world that we find ourselves in. Well ops supports the ability of being aware of the conditions of the digital world that is impacting value delivery and optimizes the way we interact with that world. It informs us and enables us to thrive in that world. But uh, for today, we're just going to take a little focus on uh, what else from a technical point of view, uh, mainly targeting uh, architects and developers um, such as yourselves. Primarily focusing on some of the processes and technology involved here. <laughs> what would, uh, so what might it look like? What does WebOS look like? Um, when you adopt a WebOS mindset, uh, your well, automated environments. Uh, all, uh, automated environments allows us to safely evaluate how our changes would affect uh, our solution, our applications. They allow us to isolate our uh, the changes that we're making and make sure that they're Performing as we expect. Let's see. Coming back to the five senses. Another example is something we do at Digital Environments are being light house integration. Most of our projects have a light house integration of some kind. When we integrate this into our CIC workflows, um, you know, we're going to see scores on our test page. We're going to have a much more complete understanding of how well our content is performing before it even goes out into the world. It informs us on how well our content is and its ability to reach audiences. It's baked in the process. Kind of idea what it looks like. Very, we all see that. So you get this on, you make sure you get this on all the pages that we're working on. This can target where, in, in, for example, on your own environments. You can make sure you're targeting your own environments to allow us to make sure it's actually uh, on. Automated updates in the context of group. Solution. Um, it's really, I kind of think about it as like going back to the five senses metaphor, the human mentality. What does that essentially look like? It's like our temporal. It gives us the ability to see into the future, continuously check to see the changes that are coming downstream with all the factors that depend on the modules. What is going to be the impact on our, on our system? And doing these things manually. Thing, but it doesn't have to be tedious. So we develop a system to automatically, dynamically uh, go out there, get all the um, updates that are there, and this taps into all of our other systems as well. It builds on pre existing elements. Um, it's a confidence to continuously keep our software uh, updated and healthy. Um,
soon. Uh, yeah, it's going to take over everything. No, it's not. Uh, it's going to make us much more proficient. It's going to make us much more efficient. Uh, it's going to keep us more aware. It's going to extend our ability to have senses and see, uh, dig deeper into understanding everything that's impacting our digital applications. And this is a uh, product that we've been trying recently. This is called Code Guide. It's really cool stuff. Um, it will automatically, for your pull requests and all the changes that you're making, give you a robust summary. It's usually fairly accurate. Sequence summary. I cannot tell you how many times this has been useful to me just to get a quick eye glance view into all the changes that have been made by a developer and understand the impact that those changes have in the flow of information uh, in the software. I'm sorry, we're going to 
spirit of it. It's a tool that can, uh, people can reach to begin approaching the complexities of the web ecosystem. Uh, how do we connect our web action workflows to that? Something you saw a couple minutes ago. How do we sell that up? How do we get our deployment results posted to our journeys, our sessions? How do we keep people informed? How do we keep people informed? How do we keep people informed? Things simplify the integration and implementation of trying and true approaches across all of our projects by centralizing the distribution of those approaches and best practices into an application tool. Seeks to remove ambiguity, clearly direct, and provide the means to architects and developers to improve their DevOps practice for themselves and the teams that work with them. Really want to emphasize the importance of centralizing the distribution mechanism further. It is critical that whenever you, however you choose to implement your own best practices, that you can have a mechanism consistent with that project. So, let's take a look at what's available today and what's coming with Palm. Drupal Core version update with Drupal. Um, powered by some clever manipulation of composer JSON and uh, use of the new uh, changes flag introducing composer 2.7. Um, how many people use composer to manage their Drupal application? How many don't? Okay. It's nice games. Um, this, is a, this is a really useful and important tool for me that I think we've all probably had the experience of needing to do a Drupal update, a core update. Between majors and trying to get all of your modules only what's necessary to update to that version of Drupal and possibly getting up a composer error message, uh, HTML size. Uh, this aims to solve that problem. That can take hours of work at developers time sometimes. The goal of this uh, task is to reduce that time to just give me a Drupal version of so it just says it. That's the ultimate goal. Uh, you can upgrade, to, you can choose as a convenience, just upgrade to a later time. So if you want to save your current major version, you can go uh, to the latest minor version. Um, likewise, just go to the next major version or just arbitrary. This actually has reduced times uh, on our upgrade projects. And an extension of that is the Drupal automatic updates. So it goes beyond just changing the code. It incorporates that. Uh, by the way, this is not the Drupal, this, this particular aspect that I'm here is available as a separate composer plugin. So you can actually start using this today. It's available. And you'll be able to use it afterwards if you want to go check it out for yourself. And I encourage you to do so. If you find any bugs, please watch them. Um, but you don't have to use Polymer to do that. This, in the end, is incorporated into Polymer, which leverages that, uh, that tool. Um, in addition to targeting a specific uh, version of Drupal, it will also, after it gets successful with that version of Drupal, it will update when you're doing something. And export your configuration so that is uh, you're capturing not just the code changes, but all of the changes that should set the uh, that are needed to fully operate that uh, your Drupal instance. Um, so then you can just theoretically make you know, those changes, push them up, have your processes on. Visual regression testing, other other tests, and then deploy out to your cloud hosting environment. Pretty easy. Uh, Roadmap I am not currently part of Polymer, but we're working with we work with the other one. We do a lot of work with Amazon. 
So we leverage uh, their new availability um, very aggressively.
Another aspect that we're going to be integrating is, and it's important, is uh, your tax management and your communication channel integrations. So, how many actually people here are familiar with Jira? Yeah, everyone. Uh, Slack? Yeah. So, uh, in Q3 and Q4, we'll be rolling out um, the recipe for this where uh, it'll be able to map and uh, update the issues associated with the work that you're doing. So ideally you're working in a way that you're, you're one issue per pull request, and maybe it's all the work you're creating around the environment with that. And as you do this, typically the developer will make these, take these actions and then go back to Jira, give them the ticket, uh, sign it, sometimes they forget. This adds up over time, and we want to, again, focus on, does it, does it need to be a manual step? One of the simple themes and tenets of all is we are taking the best practices that we've learned. Anything that shouldn't be a manual step, does it need to be a manual step? Automated. Save your time. Uh, this to make sure that people are consistently checking things that they should be checking on where what's on their plate to fulfill what's the actual community because they can be on it. So coming back full circle, embracing the web box mindset. You know, ask yourself, for the processes that you're building, does every project need this? The processes that you build that you find yourself perhaps copy facing uh, project, project, project. Does that work? Sure. Is it consistent? No. Can you be more consistent? Yes. Every project can benefit from the work that you're doing. Find a way to make that useful. Automate everything that can be done. It's not easy. It's in fact very uh, anti-consumer, which is why you know a lot of people just don't do it because they have so much other work that they're trying to do. But it's so worth taking the time to embrace automation and pursue it. It's worth taking the time to. And in the words of Cork, my favorite sorry. Spread this way and go like this time. When you do take the time to do so. Because then you never have to do it again. And I just want to highlight some other items that we're working on to really with long run. Um, for code quality, how many people are familiar with PHP Sam? Yeah, static analysis. Very, very, very good at finding bugs. PHP is an important element for addressing the security and IT side of the little uh, box of the world of well, so Making sure that these, these people are going to know. Is your code secure? Is it bug free? This is a tool that's very simple to integrate, but you know, it takes a lot of time to potentially learn how to first use it for the first time. You know, we're going to add a tool to do that. And uh, integrated to Drupal. Uh, HP Sand has a nice little Drupal extension, uh, something you might be familiar with. So we'll add that. Establish baseline so that, because when you start using it, it's very aggressive about telling you how much is wrong with your code. But you can set a baseline so that you can start using it without seeing all these other errors and gradually fix the errors that already exist. Drupal um, application security user. Drupal recipe for including very common security modules and settings. Uh, on the active security side, uh, we have working with a Drupal updates. So we have the Drupal updates, uh, Drupal updates working now and following directly. You can go to the system. Uh, but we also want to go to the workflow uh, so that literally you just run the give me this capability command and it will just set up for it. It should be that easy. It should be that easy. Very good. Um, 
increasing some sites to 447 and the other integration that I had earlier. Um, site 247 is not a monitoring tool. Um, it's pretty handy, pretty simple. Um, and it has uh, some nice APIs to really uh, enable uh, a tool with to be able to interface with and set and configure uh, things that you should monitor, such as uptime, how it just set. And if you're asking about including very concept performance modules and steps. Yeah, so. Uh, not as necessary. Drupal actually had a very good performance uh, boost, um, but there are still uh, some models out there that can be published here. This is some sets of advanced variations. On the marketing side, enhancing how we integrate your two solutions and for integration with Drupal specifically. Um, we have a prototype of this. We'll be open sourcing it in probably Q2, Q4. Um, it really, when you're visual uh, text on Drupal, there's some frustrating elements to deal with. Uh, how you handle logins. When you just have a box text on Drupal site, it's very difficult to make the results consistent from one shot to the next. Um, this needs to eliminate that frustration. Uh, in which some of you may well, pick up Polymer and try the visual regression testing integration, and then have to deal with those frustrations to the end. Uh, some quick references and resources. Um, Links to the Polymer repositories, the Backstop.js uh, uh, repository with documentation, so you're familiar with uh, leveraging Backstop, uh, and the Drupal core upgrades and post plugin repository. The technology itself, the 